Section 1 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aeneid of Virgil. Translated by John Dryden. Book 1, Part 1. Arms and the man I sing, who, forced by fate, and haughty Juno's unrelenting hate, Expelled and exiled, left the Trojan shore, Long labours both by sea and land he bore, And in the doubtful war before he won The Latian realm and built the destined town, His banished gods restored to rites divine, And settled sure succession in his line, From whence the race of Alban fathers come, and the long glories of majestic Rome. O muse, the causes and the crimes relate, what goddess was provoked, and whence her hate, for what offence the queen of heaven began, to persecute so brave, so just a man, involved his anxious life in endless cares, exposed to wants, and hurried into wars. Can heavenly minds such high resentment show, or exercise their spite in human woe. Against the Tiber's mouth, but far away, an ancient town was seated on the sea, a Tyrian colony. The people made stout for the war and studious of their trade, Carthage the name, beloved by Juno more than her own Argos or the Samian shore. Here stood her chariot, here if heaven were kind, the seat of awful empire she designed, Yet she had heard an ancient rumour fly, long sighted by the people of the sky, that times to come should see the Trojan race, her Carthage ruin and her towers deface. Nor thus confined the yoke of sovereign sway should on the necks of all the nations lay. She pondered this, and feared it was in fate, nor could forget the war she waged of late, for conquering Greece against the Trojan state. Besides, long causes working in her mind, and secret seeds of envy lay behind, deep graven in her heart the doom remained, of partial Paris, and her form disdained. The grace bestowed on ravished Ganymede, Electra's glories, and her injured bed. Each was a cause alone, and all combined, to kindle vengeance in her haughty mind. For this, far distant from the Latian coast, she drove the remnants of the Trojan host, and seven long years the unhappy wandering train were tossed by storms and scattered through the main. Such time, such toil required the Roman name, such length of labor for so vast a frame. Now scarce the Trojan fleet, with sails and oars, had left behind the fair Sicilian shores, Entering with cheerful shouts the watery rain, And ploughing frothy furrows in the main, When, labouring still with endless discontent, The Queen of Heaven did thus her fury vent. Then am I vanquished, must I yield, said she, And must the Trojans reign in Italy. So fate will have it, and Jove adds his force, Nor can my power divert their happy course. Could angry Pallas with revengeful spleen the Grecian navy burn and drown the men? She, for the fault of one offending foe, the bolts of Jove himself presumed to throw. With whirlwinds from beneath she tossed the ship, and bare exposed the bosom of the deep. Then as an eagle gripes the trembling game, the wretch yet hissing with her father's flame, she strongly seized, and with a burning wound transfixed and naked on a rock she bound. But I, who walk in awful state above, the majesty of heaven, the sister-wife of Jove, for length of years my fruitless force employ against the thin remains of ruined Troy. What nations now to Juno's power will pray, or offerings on my slighted altars lay? Thus raged the goddess, and with fury fraught the restless regions of the storms she sought, where in a spacious cave of living stone the tyrant Aeolus from his airy throne 
with power imperial curbs the struggling winds and sounding tempests in dark prisons binds this way and that the impatient captives tend and pressing for release the mountains rend high in his hall the undaunted monarch stands and shakes his sceptre and their rage commands which did he not their unresisted sway would sweep the world before them in their way earth air and seas through empty space would roll and heaven would fly before the driving soul in fear of this the father of the gods confined their fury to those dark abodes and locked him safe within oppressed with mountain loads imposed a king with arbitrary sway to loose their fetters or their force allay to whom the suppliant queen her prayers addressed and thus the tenor of her suit expressed o aeolus for to thee the king of heaven the power of tempests and of winds has given thy force alone their fury can restrain and smooth the waves or swell the troubled main a race of wandering slaves abhorred by me with prosperous passage cut the tuscan sea to fruitful italy their course they steer and for their vanquished gods design new temples there raise all thy winds with night involve the skies sink or disperse my fatal enemies twice seven the charming daughters of the main around my person wait and bear my train succeed my wish and second my design the fairest deopia shall be thine and make thee father of a happy line to this the god tis yours o queen to will the work which duty binds me to fulfil these airy kingdoms and this wide command are all the presence of your bounteous hand yours is my sovereign's grace and as your guest i sit with gods at their celestial feast raise tempests at your pleasure or subdue dispose of empire which i hold from you he said and hurled against the mountain side his quivering spear and all the god applied the raging winds thrush through the hollow wound and dance aloft in air and skim along the ground then settling on the sea the surges sweep raise liquid mountains and disclose the deep south east and west with mixed confusion roar and roll the foaming billows to the shore the cables crack the sailors fearful cries ascend and sable night involves the skies and heaven itself is ravished from their eyes loud peals of thunder from the poles ensue then flashing fires the transient light renew the face of things a frightful image bears and present death in various forms appears struck with unusual fright the trojan chief with lifted hands and eyes invokes relief and thrice and four times happy those he cried that under ilian walls before their parents died tydides bravest of the grecian train why could not i by that strong arm be slain and lie by noble hector on the plain o great sarpedon in those bloody fields where simois rolls the bodies and the shields of heroes whose dismembered hands yet bear that dart aloft and clinch the pointed spear thus while the pious prince his fate bewails fierce boreas strove against his flying sails and rent the sheets the raging billows rise and mount the tossing vessels to the skies nor can the shivering oars sustain the blow the galley gives her side and turns her prow while those astern descending down the steep through gaping waves behold the boiling deep three ships were hurried by the southern blast and on the secret shelves with fury cast those hidden rocks the ausonian sailors knew they called them altars when they rose in view and showed their spacious backs above the flood three more fierce eurus in his angry mood dashed on the shallows of the moving sand and in mid-ocean left them moored a land orontes bark that bore the lycian crew a horrid sight even in the hero's view from stem to stern by waves was overborne the trembling pilot from his rudder torn was headlong hurled thrice round the ship was tossed then bulged at once and in the deep was lost and here and there above the waves were seen arms pictures precious goods and floating men 
the stoutest vessel to the storm gave way and sucked through loosened planks the rushing sea ilionius was her chief alethes old achates faithful abas young and bold endured not less their ships with gaping seams admit the deluge of the briny streams meantime imperial neptune heard the sound of raging billows breaking on the ground displeased and fearing for his watery reign he reared his awful head above the main serene in majesty then rolled his eyes around the space of earth and seas and skies he saw the trojan fleet dispersed distressed by stormy winds and wintry heaven oppressed full well the god his sister's envy knew and what her aims and what her arts pursue he summoned eurus and the western blast and first an angry glance on both he cast then thus rebuked audacious winds from whence this bold attempt this rebel insolence is it for you to ravage seas and land unauthorized by my supreme command to raise such mountains on the troubled main whom i but first tis fit the billows to restrain and then you shall be taught obedience to my reign hence to your lord my royal mandate bear the realms of ocean and the fields of air are mine not his by fatal lot to me the liquid empire fell and trident of the sea his power to hollow caverns is confined there let him reign the jailer of the wind with hoarse commands his breathing subjects call and boast and bluster in his empty hall he spoke and while he spoke he smoothed the sea dispelled the darkness and restored the day Kimothoe, triton and the sea-green train of beauteous nymphs the daughters of the main clear from the rocks the vessels with their hands the god himself with ready trident stands and opes the deep and spreads the moving sands then heaves them off the shoals where'er he guides his finny coursers and in triumph rides the waves unruffle and the sea subsides as when in tumults rise the ignoble crowd mad are their motions and their tongues are loud and stones and brands and rattling volleys fly and all the rustic arms that fury can supply if then some grave and pious man appear they hush their noise and lend a listening ear he soothes with sober words their angry mood and quenches their innate desire of blood so when the father of the flood appears and o'er the seas his sovereign trident rears their fury falls he skims the liquid plains high on his chariot and with loosened reins majestic moves along and awful peace maintains the weary trojans ply their shattered oars to nearest land and make the libyan shores within a long recess there lies a bay an island shades it from the rolling sea and forms a port secure for ships to ride broke by the jutting land on either side in double streams the briny waters glide betwixt two rows of rocks a sylvan scene appears above and groves forever green a grot is formed beneath with mossy seats to rest the nereids and exclude the heats down through the crannies of the living walls the crystal streams descend in murmuring falls no halsers need to bind the vessels here nor bearded anchors for no storms they fear seven ships within this happy harbour meet the thin remainders of the scattered fleet the trojans worn with toils and spent with woes leap on the welcome land and seek their wished repose first good achates with repeated strokes of clashing flints their hidden fire provokes short flame succeeds a bed of withered leaves the dying sparkles in their fall receives caught into life in fiery fumes they rise and fed with stronger food invade the skies the trojans dropping wet or stand around the cheerful blaze or lie along the ground some dry their corn infected with the brine then grind with marbles and prepare to dine aeneas climbs the mountain's airy brow and takes a prospect of the seas below if Capis thence or antheus he could spy or see the streamers of caicus fly no vessels were in view but on the plain 
three beamy stags command a lordly train of branching heads the more ignoble throng attend their stately steps and slowly graze along he stood and while secure they fed below he took the quiver and the trusty bow Achates used to bear the leaders first he laid along and then the vulgar pierced nor ceased his arrows till the shady plain seven mighty bodies with their blood disdain for the seven ships he made an equal share and to the port returned triumphant from the war the jars of generous wine Achestes gift when his trinacrian shores the navy left he set a brooch and for the feast prepared in equal portions with the venison shared thus while he dealt it round the pious chief with cheerful words allayed the common grief endure and conquer jove will soon dispose to future good our past and present woes with me the rocks of scylla you have tried the inhuman cyclops and his din defied what greater ills hereafter can you bear resume your courage and dismiss your care an hour will come with pleasure to relate your sorrows past as benefits of fate through various hazards and events we move to Lytium, and the realms foredoomed by Jove, called to the seat the promise of the skies, where Trojan kingdoms once again may rise, endure the hardships of your present state, live and reserve yourselves for better fate. These words he spoke, but spoke not from his heart, his outward smiles concealed his inward smart. The jolly crew, unmindful of the past, their quarry share, their plenteous dinner haste. Some strip the skin, some portion out the spoil, the limbs yet trembling in the cauldrons boil, some on the fire the reeking entrails broil. Stretched on the grassy turf, at ease they dine, restore their strength with meat, and cheer their souls with wine. Their hunger thus appeased, their care attends the doubtful fortune of their absent friends alternate hopes and fears their minds possess whether to deem em dead or in distress above the rest aeneas mourns the fate of brave orontes and the uncertain state of gaius lycus and of amicus the day but not their sorrows ended thus when from aloft almighty jove surveys earth air and shores and navigable seas at length on libyan realms he fixed his eyes whom pondering thus on human miseries when venus saw she with a lowly look not free from tears her heavenly sire bespoke o king of gods and men whose awful hand disperses thunder on the seas and land disposing all with absolute command how could my pious son thy power incense or what alas is vanished troy's offence our hope of italy not only lost on various seas by various tempests tossed but shut from every shore and barred from every coast you promised once a progeny divine of romans rising from the trojan line in after times should hold the world in awe and to the land and ocean give the law how is your doom reversed which eased my care when troy was ruined in that cruel war then fates to fates i could oppose but now when fortune still pursues her former blow what can i hope what worse can still succeed what end of labours has your will decreed antenor from the midst of grecian hosts could pass secure and pierce the illyrian coasts where rolling down the steep timavus raves and through nine channels disembogues his waves at length he founded padua's happy seat and gave his trojans a secure retreat there fixed their arms and there renewed their name and there in quiet rules and crowned with fame but we descended from your sacred line entitled to your heaven and rights divine our banished earth and for the wrath of one removed from latium and the promised throne are these our sceptres these our due rewards and is it thus that jove his plighted faith regards to whom the father of the immortal race smiling with that serene indulgent face with which he drives the clouds and clears the skies first gave a holy kiss then thus replies daughter dismiss thy fears 
To thy desire the fates of thine are fixed, and stand entire. Thou shalt behold thy wished Lavinian walls, And ripe for heaven when fate Aeneas calls, Then shalt thou bear him up sublime to me, No counsels have reversed my firm decree. And lest new fears disturb thy happy state, Know I have searched the mystic rolls of fate, Thy son, nor is the appointed season far, in Italy shall wage successful war, shall tame fierce nations in the bloody field, and sovereign laws impose and cities build, till after every foe subdued, the sun thrice through the signs his annual race shall run, this is his time prefixed. Ascanius then, now called Iulus, shall begin his reign. He thirty rolling years the crown shall wear, then from Lavinium shall the seat transfer, and with hard labor Alba Longa build. The throne with his succession shall be filled three hundred circuits more. Then shall be seen Ilia the fair, a priestess and a queen, who, full of Mars in time with kindly throes, shall at a birth two goodly boys disclose. The royal babes a tawny wolf shall train, then Romulus his grandsire's throne shall gain, Of martial towers the founder shall become, The people Romans call, the city Rome. To them no bounds of empire I assign, Nor term of years to their immortal line. Even haughty Juno, who with endless broils Earth, seas, and heaven, and Jove himself turmoils, At length atoned, her friendly power shall join to cherish and advance the Trojan line. The subject world shall Rome's dominion own, and prostrate shall adore the nation of the gown. An age is ripening in revolving fate, when Troy shall overturn the Grecian state, and sweet revenge her conquering sons shall call, to crush the people that conspired her fall. Then Caesar from the Julian stock shall rise, whose empire ocean and whose fame the skies alone shall bound, whom, fraught with eastern spoils, our heaven, the just reward of human toils, securely shall repay with rites divine. And incense shall ascend before his sacred shrine, then dire debate and impious war shall cease, and the stern age be softened into peace. Then banished faith shall once again return, and vestal fires in hallowed temples burn, And Remus with Quirinus shall sustain the righteous laws, And fraud and force restrain. Janus himself before his fane shall wait, And keep the dreadful issues of his gate, With bolts and iron bars within remains, Imprisoned fury bound in brazen chains. High on a trophy raised of useless arms he sits, and threats the world with vain alarms. He said, and sent Cyllenius with command To free the ports and ope the Punic land To Trojan guests, lest, ignorant of fate, The queen might force them from her town and state. Down from the steep of heaven Cyllenius flies, And cleaves with all his wings the yielding skies. Soon on the Libyan shore descends the god, Performs his message and displays his rod. The surly murmurs of the people cease, And as the fates required, they give the peace. The queen herself suspends the rigid laws, The Trojans pities, and protects their cause. Meantime, in shades of night, Aeneas lies. Care seized his soul, and sleep forsook his eyes. But when the sun restored the cheerful day, He rose the coast and country to survey, Anxious and eager to discover more, It looked a wild, uncultivated shore. But whether humankind or beasts alone Possessed the new-found region was unknown. Beneath a ledge of rocks his fleet he hides. Tall trees surround the mountain's shady sides, The bending brow above a safe retreat provides. Armed with two pointed darts he leaves his friends, and true Achates on his steps attends. Lo, in the deep recesses of the wood, Before his eyes his goddess-mother stood, A huntress in her habit and her mien, 
her dress a maid her air confessed a queen bare were her knees and knots her garments bind loose was her hair and wantoned in the wind her hand sustained a bow her quiver hung behind she seemed a virgin of the spartan blood with such array harpalis bestrode her thracian courser and outstripped the rapid flood ho oh, strangers have you lately seen she said one of my sisters like myself arrayed who crossed the lawn or in the forest strayed a painted quiver at her back she bore varied with spots a lynx's hide she wore and at full cry pursued the tusky boar thus venus thus her son replied again none of your sisters have we heard or seen o virgin or what other name you bear above that style o more than mortal fair your voice and mien celestial birth betray if as you seem the sister of the day or one at least of chaste diana's train let not an humble suppliant sue in vain but tell a stranger long in tempests tossed what earth we tread and who commands the coast then on your name shall wretched mortals call and offered victims at your altars fall i dare not she replied assume the name of goddess or celestial honours claim for tyrian virgins bows and quivers bear and purple buskins o'er their ankles wear no gentle youth in libyan lands you are a people rude in peace and rough in war the rising city which from far you see is carthage and a tyrian colony phoenician dido rules the growing state who fled from tyre to shun her brother's hate great were her wrongs her story full of fate which i will sum in short Sicaeus, known for wealth and brother to the punic throne possessed fair dido's bed and either heart at once was wounded with an equal dart her father gave her yet a spotless maid pygmalion then the tyrian sceptre swayed one who condemned divine and human laws then strife ensued and cursed gold the cause the monarch blinded with desire of wealth with steel invades his brother's life by stealth before the sacred altar made him bleed and long from her concealed the cruel deed some tale some new pretense he daily coined to soothe his sister and delude her mind at length in dead of night the ghost appears of her unhappy lord the spectre stares and with erected eyes his bloody bosom bears the cruel altars and his fate he tells and the dire secret of his house reveals then warns the widow with her household gods to seek a refuge in remote abodes last to support her in so long a way he shows her where his hidden treasure lay admonished thus and seized with mortal fright the queen provides companions of her flight they meet and all combine to leave the state who hate the tyrant or who fear his hate they seize a fleet which ready rigged they find nor is pygmalion's treasure left behind the vessels heavy laden put to sea with prosperous winds a woman leads the way i know not if by stress of weather driven or was their fatal course disposed by heaven at last they landed where from far your eyes may view the turrets of new carthage rise there bought a space of ground which Birsa called from the bull's hide they first enclosed and walled but whence are you what country claims your birth what seek you strangers on our libyan earth to whom with sorrow streaming from his eyes and deeply sighing thus her son replies could you with patience hear or i relate o nymph the tedious annals of our fate through such a train of woes if i should run the day would sooner than the tale be done from ancient troy by force expelled we came if you by chance have heard the trojan name on various seas by various tempests tossed at length we landed on your libyan coast the good aeneas am i called a name while fortune favoured not unknown to fame my household gods companions of my woes with pious care i rescued from our foes to fruitful italy my course was bent 
and from the king of heaven is my descent with twice ten sail i crossed the phrygian sea fate and my mother goddess led my way scarce seven the thin remainders of my fleet from storms preserved within your harbour meet myself distressed an exile and unknown debarred from europe and from asia thrown in libyan deserts wander thus alone end of section one